Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. We have head coach Jim Fleming, running, running back Malik Grant, linebacker AJ Pena, and defensive lineman Wesley Neal. A couple of notes AJ moved up to second all time in career sacks. Oh, really? Malik, <laughs> yes. Wow. Malik is the, has the 10th most single season rushing touchdowns in URI history with 10. Nice even numbers. And this is Rhode Island's first regular season undefeated at home since 1985. So we'll open it up with a statement <laughs> from Coach, and then we'll have questions. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the way this season has gone has been, you know, part destiny, but part uh, absolute heart and perseverance. You look at accountability, productivity, perseverance. I think these guys represent that the whole way. You know, I mean, we're so much better than that. I didn't think we played a great game. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that we came out, we had some holes to fill. We had some people that had to step up for people that were banged out pretty good. It's been a long season. It's going to continue to get longer, which is a really good thing. But, uh, you know, the heart of our, our team is so strong and so hard to fracture, which in this game is what it becomes. You know, just continue to find a way to win a game is representative of a lot of hard work, a lot of people, but a lot of belief with the kids in that locker room. I mean, we're down 17 nothing. We dug a big, big hole in that half. Kids were probably a little bit more shook up than we've ever been, yeah. you know. And uh, But, you know, we came out and shoot Malik pops that big run. You know, we make stops on defense. I mean, we, we did what we needed to do, and we won the football game. So uh, you still had, what, two kicks block. I mean, some gross stuff out there. But I thought some people really stepped up. You know, Hunter stepping in as a starter, I thought that was really outstanding. There were some rough spots in the first half. I thought um, Devin Walter punting the ball the way he did was really important. But we've got uh, a lot of things we can continue to work on, and, and now we have reason I mean, we always have reason. We've got an opportunity to, I believe, be a conference champion. And I think today we've earned our way into the playoffs, which hasn't done in quite some time. Questions? AJ, two sacks, two and a half for the loss, set seven total tackles. I mean, what was it like being able to lead the defense, you know, pitching a shutout in the second half? I mean, you know, we, you know, the defense, you know, I mean, let me just start out with this, like, like, obviously, those are individual numbers, but without this guy that left to me taking double teams or triple teams, I don't, I probably don't, you know, get that, you know what I mean? Um, also, Coach Rennie, you know, he had a big emphasis this week. Obviously, you know, we had our backup quarterback in, and, you know, we were going to be in situations that, you know, was adversity, you know, and it's either you either respond to that or you don't, you know, so um, I'm just so happy we came out second half. Obviously, you know, we're one of the better teams in the second half. You know, obviously, we want to start in the first half and be better. But, um, you know, we finished it out, and it was absolutely amazing. I'm so happy to be a part of this team. This is my coach right here. I run through a wall for him, period, end of story. Four, he going to run that, and this dude going to stop running, and I'm going to get after it, period. And you got a nice chain. <laughs> <laughs> that, that long run to be on board, what did that do for you guys mentally? I think mentally it just shows us, like, this is who we are. Like, we going to run that ball, the offensive line, like, Offense doesn't run unless those five guys up front mm. are pushing the defensive line off the ball. And that's what I told them in the locker room, because I believe in those guys. They've been carrying me all season. Mm. They're the reason why I'm having a season that I'm having, you know? So without those guys, like, nothing runs. So when we pop that run, we really show, like, well, this is what we do. We gonna run that ball. Like, that's what we're always gonna do. That's our identity. Mm. And those guys up front, they did what they had to do in that second half, and, you know, we came out victorious. Uh, what you see the um, honestly, I was thinking in my head, we, it's a must win, put the team before me. So it was either he was going to duck his head, I jump over him, or I just run through him. So he ducked his head, I jumped over him, put my hands up, and I got a block. So I give all the glory to God and my teammates for doing their job in that one play. Yes, and not, for a minute there, it, it looked like it might be something different. They obviously got a good return in a short field. You guys have backed up all the way inside, but you made a couple really big plays there on defense just to force them to try the kick. 
how, how strong was that unit there in, in those critical moments? Uh, those type of moments would throw less type of defense, so they either scoring three points or less. So we, we harp ourselves on that every day. We practice ourselves on that type of situation every day. So it's like it's nothing new to us. So it was just a situation where it mattered. We came up with it mattered. Coach, 17 uh, nothing in the locker room. Obviously, you guys have been there before trailing, but never uh, to that extent. Just what's the message for you guys? How were you able to stay within yourself and really spark that second half comeback? Yeah, I, I, it's what we always do. I mean, I come in right after right after halftime, and they're always getting set up in halftime. I told them, hey, we dug a bigger hole than we normally have. we got to come on out. we got the ball in the second half. Make sure the offense can come out and get a score, and then we'll dig our way back out of it. I thought, you know, there was – probably mentioned to the defense that I think that they're better than that, and they can shut down people at their will, and they did that in the second half without a doubt. But there's no magic for me. It's just these guys got belief. Coaches made their adjustments. We went out with plenty of time, and we just went about executing, and we executed well in the second half. Malik, you reached that 1,000-yard mark this season to today. What does that mean to you to hear that number in your first season as a Ram? I didn't know that. Man. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't know that either. Yeah. Um, I mean, right. it's very, very special because, you know, just coming in, in here on my official visit with these guys, I connected right away. Like, they took me in as a brother. So it's very amazing. And all the kudos, all the props goes to the offensive line. Like, I'm always going to say that because those guys up front, without them, I can't do anything. I can't go anywhere, you know. So those five guys up front, this, this all to them. Like, they're the reason why I got 1,000 yards. And it's amazing to come to Rhodey and do that and finally go into the playoffs, you know. So being around these guys, around this team, it's amazing. Like, it's a different culture, and I love it. And I was happy that I made the decision to come here. And that offensive line, man, I'm going to keep harping on it. That offensive line, those guys up front, they fight, fight, fight. And I love those guys up front. All props to them. Malik, when you scored the touchdown and put the team ahead after being down 17 nothing, what was that feeling like? Uh, it was just a feeling of, like, it felt great, you know, because <laughs> – it felt great because me, I play, I play football. I don't play football for myself. I really play football for my teammates. I've been through so much in my life where I never want to disappoint my teammates, and I always want to put us in the best possible situation where we're winning or where someone else can score. So when I scored that touchdown, I was just like, man, those guys really fighting right now, and thank God that I got in that end zone. Like, defense is about to go do their thing. Let's go win this game. Like It was just a great feeling. AJ, it was, it was so difficult on defense in the first half. What were the adjustments? Um, honestly, like, I think it was a shell shock factor. It's it's where, like, everybody has this, like, wide face and, like, they're like, wow, can't believe this is happening, you know? And I had to yell at everybody because, like, we're going to go out and we're going to win this football game in the second half. Like, and I was trying to harp on, like, this game's not about us. It's about the seniors. These guys, you know what I'm saying? Wes has been here forever, you know what I'm saying? And this guy's been in college for, you know, a long time and, this is for, you know, for them, you know, it ain't for, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get out, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but, um, yeah, like, like, it's like when you get punched in the mouth, right, like, in the boxing, you got to respond, you know what I'm saying, so, we got hit in the mouth, and, you know, we just got to respond, that's what we did, so. Coach, Trey Alexander went down early in the game, what did you see from Damon McMillan, what did you? How did you think he stepped up as a true freshman? You know, I couldn't give you a, a real exact, you know, measurement of what he did, but he's a true freshman that came in here. We've had very high, um, not expectations, but we know what he has the potential to be. Coach Flanagan has groomed him to be able to be ready for that moment. And uh, you know, from what I saw, I thought we'd moving the ball pretty good, and he's a good blocker, and I think that he did, you know, a very good job to step in in a very crunch time situation and perform, which is, you know, what's necessary. It's necessary now, it's necessary tomorrow, continue on down the road as long as we can. Guys gotta step up because we got some we got some guys that are feeling feeling the wear of, you know, a lot of football. A lot of football. We've been playing since July thirty first and we're counting on playing further and further. So spring. Yeah, right on. <laughs> hey, we'll manage it. We'll take as much as we can get. Coach Hunter Helm said you struggled in the first half. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, Murph, Murph, you know, found a, a little sweet spot in terms of how we can get him going a little bit better. You know, I think that Hunter has is certainly very capable. I think that there's, you know, 
a little bit of press in there, you know, a little bit uncomfortable. He came in the second half last week or the first quarter and I think performed, you know, as a guy that comes in without having it. You go in as a starter, it's a little bit different with a hugely significant game. I mean, we were, we were talking about serious things on the table, playoffs and, and, uh, and championship possibilities. So I think he carried a little bit of that in. I think he guided some balls early. But uh, he was able to be able to make some throws, you know, in the second half that uh, kept us going. And, and I think that he will continue to elevate just like everybody else who has those kinds of opportunities. Jim, any update on Devin Farrell? Yes, uh, Dev, Dev uh, had surgery yesterday on a gamekeeper's thumb. And we're hoping for a miraculous recovery. We had a you know, great <laughs> opportunity to get him in there, the doctors, the medical people did a great job, you know, getting it done quickly. And, you know, the recovery is what we're hoping for is really short, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get him when we get him back. Jim, you mentioned, you know, championship opportunities, playoffs today. Have you thought on the process this week and have you thought back on the process to get here in the past half hour or so? Well, I mean, the, the, you're talking about getting to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I, we we mentioned I mentioned it one time on Monday. I said, all right, here's the gig. You know, we win one, we we'll go to the playoffs. We win two, we're I think we're co-champions. If we go ahead and can win next week, and William and Mary can step up and beat Richmond, then we could be a sole champion. Mm -hmm. But you know, step one step at a time. You know, we're going to have a bright team that's going to be loaded for bear for the state championship and the team that's gotten better all year long. But so we, 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 we recognize that. I mean, it was, it was really, this game was for the playoffs next week is for the championship and possible buyer. I mean, there's all kinds of good stuff out there, but we got to go play another 60 minutes of football and play it better than we did today. Wesley, they, they look, all they look is, you know, very free and loose in the first half. And you guys look like you were playing for something a, a little bit. How much do you carry this experience into next week and just let it rip? Um, been here for five years, and I'll say this is the best team I've been on as an aspect of holding each other accountable, keeping the standard, and basically playing for each other. I feel like we played for each other today. I feel like the young guys played for the seniors, and that's how we came out with this win. Everybody just puts each other the whole week, and when it mattered, it came up to us. So that's what happened. Jim, is there something to that? Like, you know, we're at the point where two games left, and it's real. Yeah, I mean it's real. It's real that you can you can let any negative thought come into your mind and go ahead and keep you from what you're able to achieve. You try to keep it in a positive. You know, you everybody's got their own you know demons in the middle of the night sitting there thinking about what bad things can happen. But I mean, you know, it's a it's a testimony to preparation and and will. You know, to be able to continue to focus on good things can happen. That was a tough game to get through that way, but uh, you know certainly you know the way we have gotten here is by being very short focused, one snap, one game, one practice at a time. And that's what we need to continue as we go forward. So, you know, was there a little bit of pressure there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think, you know, the kids, who knows? I mean, they're just ready to play. Now, I, I, I got to give, you know, great tribute to, you know, my buddy Greg Gattuso and the Albany Great Danes. I mean, that's a, that's a good, you know, three, four, three and eight football team. You know, and I told these kids earlier in the week, and we've been there before, you know, and you're not going to go ahead and lay down to anybody. And, you know, they came out, they battled, and, you know, they, uh, you know, they got a little bit of, you know, what's happened to us in the past. Just, you know, not, it just didn't go right enough for them, and we made some plays, and, and we ended up finding a way to win it. But it was, uh, it was great. I mean, shoot, it would be a hell of a lot sadder right now if we hadn't gone ahead and blocked that field goal. Or we would have been in overtime and we would figure out a way to win it then. Shit, we got it. <laughs> you got that thing, didn't you? <laughs> After they got two R's, man, which is really bad. No, I'm nothing on that one.